All right, guys, welcome back to the video. So in this one, we're going to be talking about Moxie devices and specifically my setup here. So my setup is made with the Benchcrafted Moxie device kit, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit here. But overall, a Moxie device is just another form of work holding option for your shop. So Moxie devices go from as simple as the one that I have here all the way to, you know, small workbenches and that that you can set up on top of your workbench to just give you that elevated work platform. Now, the idea behind a Moxie device is that it's meant for panel work. So when you're cutting dovetails, if you need to do some work holding, anytime you want to hold a panel vertically in the air like that, a mox advice is meant to give you really good control over that. Because if you compare a mox advice to something like a bench vice, with the mox advice you can apply pressure over the whole length of the panel, whereas with a normal like bench vice, you're going to only be holding you know part of a side of the panel. So a mox advice like this is going to be a lot better for doing any kind of joinery work with panels. The other benefit of a mox advice is that they're generally a lot larger than your typical bench vices. So if you're working with long stretcher pieces and you need to like plane an edge stuff like that, a mox advice can hold them nice and securely with a lot of pressure. So overall, a mox device is just something that is well suited to, you know, a small shop or if you don't have a very permanent setup. You know, if you just have a fairly generic workbench like I have here, uh, my workbench is a base from Canadian Tire and then I just laminated a bunch of 2x4s together to make the top. I don't actually have a way to install a proper bench vise onto it without, you know, really going through and building a whole new bench. So this mox vise basically covers all of my work holding options that I need with a vise. So it's really easy to just throw this up on the workbench clamp it down in place and just kind of go through it. And so the best part about a mox device is that they can be easily broken down and stored. So right now in this full setup, you can see that this thing is fairly large. Now I don't really have a good way to store this vise. Uh, mainly it just kind of lives floating around in this area here. Sometimes leaning against the wall. Sometimes I can stash it under the workbench. Uh, but for the most part, it just kind of sits somewhere out of the way until I need it. And so it is going to get fairly well beat up. But again, any tool in the shop, should, you should be pretty willing to have it get a little bit beaten up. And so the best part about a mox device is that they're very inexpensive compared to you know, most of your other woodworking devices. Because all you're going to need is a kit from one of the many different brands and then a piece of eight quarter hardwood. Uh, you could use softwood too, but it's not going to last as long, so hardwood is always going to be the better option. But anyway, on my vise, I have the Benchcrafted Moxon Vise Kit. So what you get when you get this kit is you get this nice simple setup of an Acme threaded rod, this cast iron handle, and then a few different uh, nuts and washers. And so this is one of the best setups that I've seen on the market because it's just so simple and expandable. And so the best thing about this Benchcrafted Kit is that it uses an Acme threaded rod. Now, what's great about this is that you can go and pick up these rods at basically any hardware store. And so what that means is that you can start out with this basic eight inch size that comes with the kit. And this works great for holding anything up to a two inch thick piece of wood. So it's really, so this really, this will give you plenty of options. But the other thing you can do, and what I've been trying to do for a little while now, uh, is find a rod that is long enough that I could do stuff like holding boxes. That way if I need to hand plane the side of you know, a small dovetail cabinet, a small box, things like that, I can just mount it in my vise, in the box vise here, and do it that way. Now, I will say that trying to actually find these rods can be kind of challenging, uh, just, just depending on if you know where to look. Uh, I had a couple of longer ones on order, but the different companies that I've tried to deal with, they all are a little bit weird, so I haven't actually been able to get them yet. Uh, but I'm still trying, because I think that would be an amazing thing just to get some longer rods, and that way you can expand the capabilities of your mox vise. But like I said, this 8-inch one that comes with the Benchcrafted kit is perfect for holding anything up to about 8 quarter thick stock. The other nice part about the Benchcrafted kit is the actual hand wheels themselves. Now these are very heavy cast iron uh, hand wheels. And what I found makes them just a little bit smoother is if you just take some dry lubricant or even 3-in-1 oil and just rub it on the threads here, then all you have to do is give these a light twist and they will just close all the way in. Because the beautiful thing about the fact that these are cast iron is that they have some weight to them. And then, so when you give them a good twist, they will just keep spinning. So they don't take a whole lot of effort. And when you really need to cinch down on a piece, you've got that added weight to help twist it. And it gives you really good holding power on any workpiece. And the other thing I like about these handles compared to all the other Mox Advice kits I've seen is that they're very low profile. They're just a nice small handle. You can see that it fits just perfectly in my hands here. It's not taking up a whole lot of real estate on the front side of your vise here. As you can see that with this one that's mounted in here, uh, it's very low, it's not going up and above the uh, top edge here. Whereas some of the other brands of mox devices have you know, big handles that are sticking off, you know, stuff like that, that I just don't think is very necessary for working with a mox device. And then obviously the other part of the mox device is the jaws themselves. So the mox device is made up of a front jaw, a back jaw, and then a supporting back bar, which you can see I've got mounted onto the back jaw. Now, theoretically, you can make these jaws basically whatever length you want, however thick you want. Basically, you can do whatever you want with your jaw design. 
But most manufacturers, you know, the Benchcrafted kit specifically recommends that you don't have an opening wider than 24 inches. So between the two rods here on my vise here, I've got exactly 24 inches, which is perfect as it's covered every panel that I've needed to work with. And if I ever need to do a panel that's say 36 inches long, well then I would probably just go and buy some more hard maple and just make a 36 inch long boxing vise. Because the vise actually has a lot more clamping pressure than I thought it would originally, uh, I could, you know, I could probably go up to a 48 inch one without really losing any of the capabilities here. And again, that's the benefit of a boxing vise is they can really be whatever you want them to be. You're not going to be limited by size because you could have one set of jaws that's 24 inches. You could have a set of jaws that's 48 inches. You know, whatever you need them to be, they can be. So that's the, that's probably the best part of it. And so there's a few specific things that you're going to want to do with your jaws when you're building them to make them a little bit more functional. So mainly it's going to be on the front jaw here. So you can see on the front side of this, I have a 45 degree bevel on the front edge. Now what this allows you to do is that when you're cutting half blind dovetails, it lets you tilt your saw at more of an angle so you can actually get in and cut those dovetails. If you don't have this 45 degree cut on here, you're just gonna end up cutting into your mox and vice jaws if you're doing half blind dovetails, or you're gonna have to pull your piece way out of your jaws, giving you a little bit less support. So it's very simple to cut this, just set the blade on your table saw to 45 degrees, run this through, it doesn't have to be anything precise, you just wanna have an angle there because it makes it a little bit easier and you're not losing any strength in the jaws there. The other thing you're going to want to do on the front jaws here is elongate the holes here. So what this allows for is just a little bit of wiggle room for this rod. So that if your jaw needs to be a little bit skewed, it can be. So if you're working with a, with a panel that's say one inch on this side, one and a half inches thick on the other side, your jaw can be slightly skewed. Also, if you're working with really narrow pieces, it, it allows the jaw to skew itself so you can get really good clamping pressure. So you just want to make sure that that, that rod has some wiggle room in there. And then for your back jaw, all you want to do is take the length of your front jaw and add four inches. This will give you a two inch overhang on either side. And then what you can do is just drill in a hole with a forcer bit. And this will give you a place to actually hold down the clamps. Because what I've found is that there's a few different ways to hold a mox and vise onto a workbench, but definitely having the clamps from the front is the best option. And so just having those there gives you a nice solid connection to your bench. Things aren't going to wobble around and you don't have to worry about your vise falling off, moving around, anything like that. Then on the inside of the jaws, you can see that I have some leather mounted in here. Now the Benchcrafted kit does come with some crubber, which is basically a cork and rubber mixture that's really good. You know, it's a really grippy texture, uh, but I didn't want to use it just because I've read some bad stuff about using that kind of thing in a long-term situation. And I wanted to make sure that this vise was going to last as long as possible. So on the inside of mine, I just used some veg tan tool leather. Uh, which is a lot tougher than the crubber and it's going to last a lot longer. And the only reason I chose to use it was purely because I have it lying around. And so far it's held up really good. I've had this vise for a couple of years now and you can see that the inside here, there's no need to replace this leather anytime soon. It's gonna hold up for a long, long time. But again, if you don't have access to leather, the Benchcraft kit does come with this crubber stuff. And so then the last part of the actual jaws themselves, you're gonna to want to mount a bracer bar on the back of the back jaw. So what this allows you to do is you can see on my bench here how I've got dog holes all over the place. So just using a couple of hold fasts, I can throw those into my dog holes. And now my mox device is held firmly in place. Now I will say that my holdfasts don't hold well in this bench here. Uh, because this top is made from pine, the holdfasts definitely have to form the holes a little bit, so they don't hold securely, which means that I can kind of pull this in and out, and you can see that this side is a little bit loose. So like I mentioned, I'll just put two F-clamps right on the front edge of the, of the back jaw here, and that will hold it securely in place. But the nice thing about using the holdfasts is when you have the whole moxing vise together, it's quite front heavy, so it has a tendency to kind of lean off of your bench. So by using the holdfast, it means that the device won't fall off the bench once I take those F-clamps off. So generally when I'm using the moxing vise, I will use all four clamps to give it a nice solid structure. And so this bracer bar on the back, the whole purpose of it is just to make your vise have a wider base on the overall bench. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, you can make these vices as complex as you want. Some of the coolest ones I've seen basically incorporate a whole uh, raised bench design. So you've got basically a full workbench with dog holes and everything that, uh, that is attached to the back of your moxing vise. So if you're doing a lot with dovetails, that's gonna be really beneficial for you because that would let you rest your panel on that main work area there and then have it lined up perfectly with this front edge where you're, you know, when you're transferring over your, your pins. So there's a lot that you can do and add to a moxing vise, but the best thing when you're starting out is to just have a moxing vise in your shop because it's going to give you a lot of work holding options that you wouldn't otherwise have. And so if you're looking to buy this Benchcrafted kit, you can pick it up from Lee Valley. I usually they have them in stock, so they're pretty easy to come by. And so if you guys have any questions about building your own mox advice, anything that I may have missed, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. But as always guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.